Hello, in this uh, video I'm going to be talking about how the time dilation pretty much just falls out of the metric for uh, in a Minkowski space because the space-time intervals between uh, two observers are uh, they're equal. It's kind of like the idea in uh, no matter how you orient your uh, coordinate axes, you're still going to agree upon the length. This could be your x, y. Say a different observer, they're going to measure their, call this x prime, their prime observer. And, uh, no matter how we uh, say this vector right here, call it vector t I don't know, or something. No matter how we orient this uh, vector, well, they might disagree upon the components of uh, that vector. They're gonna, they're both gonna agree upon its length, and uh, that's kind of a similar reasoning to the space-time interval. It's a little different, but we get uh, results similar to this. And uh, looking at the space-time interval for two observers, we get this is the prime observer. It's going to equal to the space time interval of the M prime observer. And we're going to show that time dilation is built into this metric. It just falls out once you do some uh, manipulations. Uh, see the factor of gamma up here and we're going to on both sides we're going to factor out uh, this uh, differential time component and so right here we're going to divide by time here time time and uh, we're going to factor it out so let's see what that's going to look like This is where we're factoring this uh, time out. As you can see here, this is our uh, velocity squared, or the prime observer squared. Velocity, if you want to, it's just velocity dotted into velocity, and then we get the component squared. And right here, this is going to equal to the same thing on the other side which everything's going to look the same except uh, there's not going to be a prime. So this is our velocity 
squared for the unprime observer. Okay, so we're going to manipulate this a little bit more and we're going to see what we get. Okay, so we get the minus the tank component. If you also see this minus sign in our metric, it uh, it's the difference between space and time. So the minus sign goes with the time component and the plus goes with the space. our prime observer and our unprime observer and we'll call the unprimed observer will be at rest so they're at rest in their frame of reference so the velocity so we'll say the coordinate systems at rest with them so their velocity is going to be zero so and we got a minus sign here and a minus sign here, so those are going to cancel. So we get okay. so we're going to take the square root of uh, both sides, and we get. dt for the unprime observer equals dt prime 1 minus the velocity squared of the prime observer, which is a scalar. And of course here we have our speed of light set equal to 1. So that's why the C isn't occurring here. And Got this one half here. So we see that our dt prime is equal to dt times gamma. And, uh, and of course, here, right, let's see, our gamma is equal to. 1 over the velocity prime squared, which and this doesn't have to be just a differential change. This could be just your delta t prime. I said it could just be doesn't have to be differential. And that's why they say uh, a moving clock runs uh, slower than a clock at rest by a factor of gamma. So according to our uh, unprime observer, observer at rest, this uh, moving clock runs slow by a factor of gamma. And gamma will always be greater than uh, unity, which means it will be It'll always be greater than one. So, so we got we get time dilation out of our uh, space-time interval, which is interesting.